There are six riders under the lap record at, Amor at Oran Park for the start of the Castrol 6 hour 1984. Bob Phyllis on the Kawasaki leads from pole position. There are two Kawasaki's, three Hondas and significantly one Yamaha in the top six. In the second six, a different story entirely and an interesting one. Malcolm Campbell, the man who has established pole position for the last three years in the Castrol 6 hour, has chosen to ride a Honda 750 in this event and is 1.8 seconds off pole. His best time, a 1 minute 20 0.9 seconds yesterday. So tremendous variety in the top 10. Three Kawasaki 900s, two Yamaha 500s, the two-stroke twin, 30 seconds to the start. One VF1000 F Honda, the road-going version of the VF1000R, the special race bike of which there are two, a VF750 and a Suzuki 750, and all ready for the Le Mans start. No great attention in motorsport than for the run across the track, leap onto the machine, start it and away. 29 Bill. bikes and riders in readiness. Bill Orn, the managing director of Castrol, is the starter. They go on the raise of the flag. It's underway, six hours. Stock standard production motorcycles, 2.6 kilometre. Oran Park Grand Prix circuit. Great start from Robert Holden on bike 11, the Suzuki 750. Rod Cox right behind him on the VF1000 F Honda. Down the long straight for the first time. Looking there at 17, Wayne Clark on the VF750F, the first man to crash last year on lap one. And there you see Holden on 11, beautifully positioned in second place, the 750 Suzuki. Further back, number seven, Michael Dowson, a long way back on the 7500 oh, Yamaha. There's a bike down there. And two is Robert the right Scoglia. Corner. Stephen Gall. Stephen Gall on the second of the Toshiba Yamaha bikes, bike nine. And the second rider for that bike, so they've changed teams. Jeff McNaughton, in fact, is down. There's the race leader, bike four, Len Willing, the man who won the Circus Paradise three hour two weeks ago, is the hot favourite at Oran Park today for the Castrol six hour. Willing's bike was thrown away yesterday by teammate Jeff French, and this is a composite bike built up overnight, taking the race engine into the team's spare chassis. Two kilometres an hour average. Number six there is the pole position bike, Rob Phyllis and Ian Perro. Back but not panicking because they know the Kawasaki's perhaps 10 kilometres an hour quicker on the straight than the Hondas. This is what we didn't see. What we didn't see at Amaru Park in the six hour race, the long run down the straight, the high speed uh, dicing, and then the braking duels. Wayne Gardner is the man who's established the pace at Oran Park all week. He came off the plane on Wednesday from Britain and immediately got down to a 1 minute 21 seconds, faster than anyone else had been around here at that stage. Finally got down into the low 119s, and everyone else had to lift their game to match the international rider, including Rob Phillips. Bike three, Phyllis on six. And Willing with a four and a quarter second lift. Here comes the Kawasaki. Out on Roger Hayes. And just wheels past him down the main straight. That's a significant advantage for the Kawasaki GPZ 900 pass. He's twice winner of the Castrol 6 hour. Probably his swan song ride. But for Rob Phillips, yesterday, after eight years of trying, pole position in the Castrol 6 hour, and a win today would mean a great deal to him. Just seven minutes into the race, and it's Willing with a 4.3 second lead on bike four over bike number 12.
Kawasaki Australia entry, second back Scott Stevens, Paul Feeney, third place back two Rod Cox, fourth place number three Wayne Gardner pulling away from the clump which now is headed by Roger Hayes on eight from Rob Phyllis on six, number eleven Neil Chivers, number five Peter Byers, Alan Blanco for Matic Racing, then seven Richard Scott Michael Dowson, the best placed at the Yamaha 500s, number 16 Max Thompson. Wayne Gardner in second place, but no longer. Back to third as Rob Phyllis goes into second place now, hauling back the lead of Len Willing on a GPZ 900 Kawasaki to less than eight seconds. Gardner had done that, and now Phyllis has surged past him. Remember that Phyllis on lap one was in sixth place. He's worked his way forward now to second. No, third, because there is Paul Feeney in second. So the Kawasaki's have taken over second and third position from Wayne Gardner, who goes wide, and he looks like he's got a problem. Has he lost a gear or what? But he almost stopped on okay. at lap 34. There it is, up on its locks. Feeney off, Scott Stevens goes on the machine. Neville Doyle, the team Kawasaki leader in front of the bike. No change of tyre. Pirelli man moves in to check the tyre uh, the tyre temperature. I think it's got an engine problem. It sounded very ragged a couple of laps ago. Stephen, ready to go see. out. Long stop. It's been in the pits now for more than 25 seconds. 27.335 second stop for Scott Stevens, Paul Feeney. 35.79. There's the new race leader, Rob Phyllis. And look at Michael Dowson on him. Brilliant riding from Dowson. Gee whiz, he's been producing some magic and he goes into the lead over Phyllis. Well, this is just brilliant stuff from Dowson on a 500cc bike, two-stroke, 90 horsepower, and he has ridden his heart out. Did that at surface, but retired with leg tramp. He's gone six minutes past the one hour, 12 minutes that he needed to do to get himself four pit stops in the Castrol six hour. And maybe by trying to pull out a little more distance, he's cost himself a lot of time. Here he comes to the pit and he stops now. Phyllis is still on the bike. Perro now, Ian Perro gets on the machine. seconds but it doesn't start. Finally it fires at 22.5 seconds. It was interesting to note at that pit stop that they put a little bit of uh, fire extinguisher foam around the front of the bike thereby cooling the machine. An interesting concept. Well we've just got another little bit of <laughs> Uh, one of the difficulties of racing in the Castrol 6 hour, Robbie Phillips, who was in the race lead there for a while, couldn't see his pit forward. <laughs> Did you run out of fuel at the end, Rob? Oh, I think I might have. Wouldn't start just then. Um, I've got bad eyes. I should wear glasses while I ride. <laughs> um, I looked for the board, but they put the different board up and I was still looking, couldn't see it. And then Ian just about leaned over the fence and grabbed me. So uh, that's how I stopped. Right, well you've had a, a fairly um, slow start to the race, didn't you? You were back in 6th or 7th position at race start and now you've worked your way back up to near the race lead. Is that the way you found it? I couldn't find the ignition switch button. You're in the wars, mate. What have you been up to for the last couple of weeks? Where's the button? Where's the button? I'm looking around and I couldn't see any. Where's the button? Then it went. Well, you did well to get back up into second spot and into the race lead there for a short while. What in the race lead? Yeah, Michael Dowson was um, dicing with you for the race lead briefly there for a moment. Oh, how's that, eh? Uh, see what happens. Um, it's pretty hot and slippery out there. You didn't change the rear tyre. Didn't we? No. You sure? Yeah. Oh. But very quick if you did, I didn't see it. Yeah? It only takes about 19 seconds or something. I don't know, I didn't look. I don't, I don't think you did, mate. So yeah. how does that affect you? Well, it doesn't affect me, it's got to worry about it, isn't it? <laughs>